This episode of the LCTV News is brought to you by Columbia Insurance Agency. Serving the Lynn community for over 60 years with home, auto, and business insurance. Hello, I'm Mukala Kabongo, and this is your LCTV News Update for Friday, March 19th, 2021. Early this week, Mayor McGee announced that he will not be running for re-election in the upcoming mayoral race. Mayor McGee did not specify the reasons for his decision to not seek re-election. The last time a mayor made the decision to not run for re-election, we'd have to go back to the early 2000s when the late Mayor McManus made the decision to not run for re-election. Mayor McGee says he is committed to serving out his term and is very confident residents will choose a new leader who will build on what his administration has done for the last four years. LCTV will keep you updated in the upcoming weeks and months, months of on potential candidates. Building bridges through music co-founders Mrs. Doreen Moray and Mrs. Virginia Peacock Mackers were recognized as Black Excellence Honorees by the Massachusetts Black and Latino Legislative Caucus. The Black Excellence Award was presented to the pair by Senator Brendan Crichton and Rep. Peter Capano, who nominated the pair for the award. Mrs. Murray says this could not have been this could not have been done without the support of the community. Mrs. Make, Mrs. Mackers added that every day they learn something new from the youth in their program. Congratulations to Mrs. Murray and Mrs. Mackers on their awards. Earlier this week, Mayor McGee, along with National Guard workers, toured the city's vaccine clinic at Lintec Fieldhouse. The clinic, since opening, has seen hundreds of residents make appointments to receive their vaccines. Residents this month have received their second doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. Those residents who are interested in a vaccine should visit the City of Lynn website to set up an appointment. A two-alarm fire early Monday morning destroyed a home on Linden Street. Linden Fire Department received calls for a reported fire around 1.50 a.m. Upon arrival, they found heavy fire coming from the house. Firefighters had to fight through cold temperatures, high winds, and low fire hydrants to get the fire under control. Captain Joseph Zukis said the, the home at this point is unlivable. There were no reported injuries, and the cause of the fire remains under investigation. Also on Monday afternoon, a two-alarm fire that began in the kitchen of a triple-decker on Essex Street that led to 17 people being evacuated from the home was quickly ex extinguished by Lynn Fire Department. The fire was contained on the second floor of the building where it began. There were no reported injuries, and the cause of the fire is under investigation. Over the weekend, the Lynn Swampscott Veterans Service organized a caravan to celebrate the birthday of World War II veteran and Lynn resident Milton Steller. LCTV was on hand. Yeah, and I, I'm really honored to be with you on your 95th birthday. <laughs> Over the weekend, Lynn residents celebrated World War II vet Milton Steller's milestone birthday. Um, I think especially during this time of uh, COVID, it's important that we celebrate milestones such as this one. It's been amazing how all they all got together over the past several weeks and made all this thing come together. It really surprised me. <laughs> yeah, but uh, somebody has to do it, so that's what it's all about. According to son Stuart Steller, Milton in the past has overcame several illnesses and with COVID taking the lives of many elderly residents, this birthday meant more to the Steller family. He was able to stay safe and get through this whole thing in the pandemic and that I was able to get him the shots uh, for, the, for the vaccine 
in a timely fashion, and he was one of the first people to get it, and I, I couldn't be happier. Some may deem this as like a small uh, event, but to us, it's, it's really heart fulfilling. Mayor McGee and Senator Brendan Crichton were some of the elected officials on hand for the celebration. Oh, I'd like to just present it to you so you can add it to all the wonderful things you have here. Okay. Recognition of your years of dedicated service to the U.S. throughout World War II and your time in the U.S. Coast Guard and the celebration of the joyous occasion of your 95th birthday. Uh, so Lynn Swamscott Veterans Services Department um, has been just paramount in organizing this event today. Um, I'm very lucky to live this long and have a, you know, and a very healthy life. Now for the sports update, the Lynn English Bulldogs moved to 2-0 on the season after their 82-22 beatdown of Revere High Wednesday. The Bulldogs were led by Ademide Badmus and Lou Rivera, who each had 22 points on the night. Badmus Badmus notched another double-double as he grabbed 19 rebounds. English, English's matchup with Somerville today has been canceled due to a positive COVID test within the Somerville basketball team. English's next matchup will be next Wednesday against Everett. The Lady Bulldogs also moved to 2-0 on the season after, their, after defeating Revere 49-31. A balanced attack on offense for English and stifling defense helped the Bulldogs run away in this one. Fresh, freshman Jaylee Perry led the way for English with her 10 points and 8 rebounds. Fellow freshman Alicia Jean added 8 points and 6 rebounds. Although they came out with the victory, head coach Mackenzie Child said they can play a lot better than they did. The Lady Bulldogs are back on the court today as they travel to Somerville. Lynn Classical's boys and girls basketball teams both moved to 2-0 on the season after def defeating Medford on Tuesday. The Lady Rams squeaked out a close 49-48 victory after nearly giving the game away. After seeing their 9-point lead erased in the fourth, the Lady Rams made key plays on offense and defense to seal the game. Senior Amelia Pedro led the way for the Rams with 19 points. 16 of those points came in the first half. Sophomore Ava Thurman added 14. The Lady Rams are back on the court today as they host Everett. On the boys' side, it was a battle to move to 2-0 as they squeaked out the 68-61 victory over Medford. After taking a 20-7 lead after the first quarter, Medford used a 25-point second quarter to cut the Rams' lead to one going into the half. Medford took a 45-44 lead in the second half, but that would be short-lived as Classical knocked down a three to make it 47-45. A strong defensive and offensive effort in the fourth quarter allowed the Rams to pull away from the Mustangs. Jaden Gonzalez was the high scorer for the Rams as he had a team-high 21 points. Senior Angel Garcia Figueroa had a double-double with his 18 points and 12 rebounds. The Rams will host Everett today. Tip-off is at 4 p.m. Lynn Tech boys soccer team are now 2-1-1 on the season after their 6-2 victory over Neshoba Valley Tech. Brian Barrera had a team-high three goals for the Tigers. The Tigers hit the road on Wednesday when they take on Winthrop. The Lady Tigers moved to 1-2-1 on the season after they tied with Neshoba on Wednesday. The lone goal for the Lady Tigers was scored by Sandra Sandy Garcia. Tech looks to bounce back on Wednesday when they take on Winthrop. Kip Academy soccer team shut out Greater Lawrence 11-0 for their first win of the season. Gabrielle Barrios and Christian Garcia Bermudez each had two goals in the matchup. The game saw six Panthers score a goal, while goalkeeper Angel Lopez pitched the shutout. The two teams will face off again on Monday at Manning Field. In football news, Kip Academy was dominant in their season opening win at Manning Field last Friday as they defeated Neshoba Valley 40-2. The Panthers are back on the field tomorrow afternoon as they host Greater Lowell. Kickoff is at noon. The Boston Celtics have dropped three out of their last four games 
after Wednesday night's 117-110 defeat to the lowly Cleveland Cavaliers. The Celtics in the first half struggled on the offensive end as they only managed 38 points and found themselves down 17 points at halftime. A strong second half was not enough as they allowed the Cavs to score 36 points in that final period. The Celtics were led by Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum once again as Tatum led the way with 29 points and Brown added 28. The green team looked to get back in the win column tonight when they take on the Sacramento Kings. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. The Boston Bruins have won back-to-back -back games after last night's 4-1 victory over the Buffalo Sabres. Greg McKegg got, got things going in the first with his goal to put the Bruins up 1-0. The Bees will get a pair of goals in the second after Cal Oposo tied it up at 1. At 1 apiece, Jake DeBrusque scored on a power play for the 2-1 lead. Craig Smith would follow that up with a goal of his own later in the period. David Pasternak's pa power play in the third would put the game out of reach. The two teams will face off again today in Buffalo. On this week's Lynn Lowdown, we were joined by Marissa Speranza and Yasmira, Yasmir Himenya. Here is this week's Lowdown. Let's talk about this grant that you all received. Uh, last month was, they made that announcement, I believe. Sometime last month, sometime last month. So, yeah, so we actually have, I believe we received the funding maybe as far back as December. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, time is, time is meaningless. Yeah. It's, it's still 2020. Like, like I'm still not. <laughs> so, so the funding we got, we called the program, the HOPE Initiative, mm -hmm. Housing Opportunity Partnership Endeavor. And the funding we received was from a few different sources, from Beverly and Addison Gilbert Hospitals, from the Red Sox Foundation, and primarily through MOVA, the Massachusetts Office for Victim Assistance. Mm -hmm. We received this funding specifically for support during the COVID-19 pandemic for housing for families. To watch the full interview, visit the LCTV website. LCTV is, invi is inviting poets to submit videos for LCTV's second Poetry Jam in April. All of March, we will be accepting video submissions, we'll, which will be used for our National Poetry Month Poetry Jam in April. Those who are interested should email their videos to mkabongo at lintv.org. Thank you for watching the LCTV News update make sure to subscribe to the lctv facebook page and lctv's youtube channel and also visit the lctv website to watch any show at any time on your computer phone or tablet i'm ukala kabongo and this has been your lctv news update have a great weekend